Sonic the Hedgehog 2. The one game I don't remember playing along my medium defining duo Sonic 1 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Despite knowing the gist of it from either watching my brother play or callbacks to it from later games, I definitely know I haven't touched most of it myself until now. And after playing it for myself, I realized something. I realized what Sonic 2 could have been. Sonic 2 and I have the strangest relationship. For the longest time, it has felt as if I've had memories of Sonic 2 that aren't actually mine. And that has led my brain and body to have a disconnect when it comes to Sonic 2. My brain whipped up memories through passively watching my brother play. And yes, passively, because anytime my brother was playing a game on the TV, I was usually showing support on the sidelines while also playing a handheld of choice. And vice versa would ring true if I was the one playing a game on the TV. The other memories stem from playing other games that have cookie cutouts of Sonic 2 in them, so games like Sonic Generations, Sonic Mania, etc. The muscle memory imprinted on my body came from nothing, cause I don't remember playing it from what I can remember, but I did play the other classic Sonic games so that counts as having played all of them, right? Well, that was the type of energy that my subconscious was channeling through my veins at the very least. I don't know what I was on, but for some reason the back end of my mind was so sure that elements of Sonic 2 did in fact exist, but Sonic 2 itself did not. It was as if I had a recipe of Sonic 2 in front of me and I added in ingredients such as my blurry memories of watching my brother play, my later memories that I made with the cookie cutouts, and the elements I knew of from word of mouth such as the Scythers and Halfpipe, mixed those together and still came out with a game other than Sonic 2. Even if I played that game and didn't see a glimmer of the elements I mixed in with it. So what game is Chemical Plant from? Probably from Sonic 3. So, what game is Chemical Plant from? Probably from Sonic 3. It's crazy how bad I curb stomped Sonic 2, because I didn't do that with Sonic CD, even though I knew about it and I watched the OVAs. But maybe I didn't make weird memories of Sonic CD because one, I hadn't played it or seen how it played at all until I was out of school, and two, because we did things in school that we weren't supposed to do like finding a way to watch said OVAs, along with stick fights epic rap battles of history, and playing flash games, which left an impression. Mostly because of being under the notion that I wasn't supposed to do any of that stuff at school anyhow. Despite all of those shenanigans, none of it matters now because today I do acknowledge Sonic 2 and I have finally played it. So let's actually go ahead and get into what Sonic 2 is to me today, and also what it could have been. And what better way to make our way through all of this than by taking it one step at a time and looking at each zone from start to end while sprinkling some other elements in between. Though, <laughs> as I'm looking at my notes, I am taken aback. <laughs> um, why is it that people like this game exactly? One sided question did give me a perspective to chew on, so I did try to keep this in mind, but woo! Uh, you know what? Let's just save it till we get there. Emerald Hill. Oof. <laughs> Where do I even start with this? Uh, well, Emerald Hill is so, so awesome. Uh, what the heck? I was not expecting to enjoy Emerald Hill as much as I did. It's like a freaking playground. And I know I mentioned before that Green Hill was like a playground, but if I were to compare the two, Green Hill is like a playground for kids that teach you how the equipment works. It's a place that's still very fun for me, but that's what I would say if I was comparing the two. Whereas Emerald Hill is like a I'm a big kid now playground that's souped up big time and lets you cut loose and do whatever the heck you want. And maybe that's due to how much faster the game feels. 
Something that you notice is that Sonic starts to drag away from that center position that the camera is focusing on the faster that you get. That's something that I definitely think makes this feeling fresh and crispy as if it was just pulled out of the oven. I don't know the exact details so I'll just have to try to do some research at one point or another but I do remember Avatar Aiden mentioning in one of his videos that a cap was removed producing this result. It's just so cool because I can go back and forth in this zone again and again and again and that is sure enough what I did. Mostly because it's just fun to do so, especially with how points of no return are non-existent, which also helped with obtaining the Chaos Emeralds here, but we'll get into the Chaos Emeralds a bit later. And that's pretty much all I have to say here. If I had to dedicate a few words to how I felt about Emerald Hill, it would be that it felt free and fun. Though, I will say that Something feels different here. I can't quite put my finger on it, but something is off. But oh well, it was fun and it's time to move on. <sighs> I can feel the burning of my nose hairs already. Now, this certainly feels familiar. Uh, well, it's the cookie cutouts that are bringing the familiarity to the surface. <laughs> Regardless of that, Chemical Plant in Sonic 2 is just about everything that I think it would be. It's fun, it's groovy, it's a great time. The aesthetic is great just like I remember, or rather, what I remember from the future? Yeah. Anyhow, you get what I mean. I don't want to say word for word what I said about Emerald Hill, but they both are very fun. I guess the feeling of being free like an island air freshener isn't present here since there's a feeling of danger lurking through the chemically soaked air. It's honestly also reminiscent of a roller coaster, and I love roller coasters. Though I still feel something that's a bit different. Something that I don't remember feeling when I played Sonic 1 or 3. Maybe I'm just imagining things. So far everything has been good for the most part, so it should be smooth sailing from here, right? Are you one of those people who don't really drink water or forget to do so but then there are those random times when it tastes so good and you just can't stop chugging that stuff? That's kind of the feeling Aquatic Ruin gave me. I don't necessarily dislike any of the water levels that exist but Aquatic Ruin is such a refreshing take on a water level. Like why wasn't this level made into a cookie cutout? The music is actually something that I remember, but only when I started to hear the tune itself did it jog my memory. I do like it quite a bit. Also, I enjoy the ruin aesthetic mixed in with the leafy greens that entangle themselves throughout the stage. Overall, it's something that I really... This. This is it. Right here. This is where I started to acknowledge what was different. I knew something was off, but I had been feeling so good about this game that I had ignored the initial feeling that was setting off an alarm in the back of my mind. But this is where I was finally able to understand why playing this felt so weird to me. Something about this level design and enemy placement formula is different from what I'm used to. Different from Sonic 1 and Sonic 3, I mean. I know I've played them before, so I've grown a bit more accommodated to their level design habits, but I've also not been one to really replay games. I was never really one of those people. I see the appeal in replaying games since I've gotten older, but it's mostly the feeling that I got from playing a game that sticks with me. So I don't usually remember every beat of a level, so to speak. Bars. The times that I've played Sonic 1 and Sonic 3, I can probably count on both of my hands. And the gaps of time between each session that I played spanned years. But anytime I've jumped back in, I start to remember how I can preemptively avoid getting hit because to me, their level design and enemy placement habits have a gradual and consistent approach. It's like Sonic 1 and Sonic 3's level design and enemy placement are written in the format of a novel. The placements become increasingly intense over time and in a way that's foreshadowed and allows for a reaction and predictions as to where enemies are placed since the level design conditions the player over that period of time. I'm positive neither game is perfect because I can recall a few cheap shots, however the amount of frustration I feel in either of those games is minish cap in comparison to the frustration that brims at the rim of the kettle pot that is Sonic 2. Like, what is this? Do they want me to use the springs or not? The amount of times my hands tightened around my controller because of happenings that felt, ironically, out of my control were of the insane amounts of variety. 
Needless to say, Aquatic Ruin left me feeling scared for the rest of my playthrough as there were quite a few more incidents on my way to the end of the stage. And this is where my notes started to pivot from talking about what I liked and disliked to giving the game a benefit of the doubt and trying to use the times I got hit or lost a life as learning lessons. Roll into a ball randomly to avoid BS. Be wary of red springs. Is it safe? Seems like everything could be fine, but you never know. I did tread very carefully here because again, I was scared out of my mind and I didn't want to get a game over. Surprisingly, I hardly ran into any enemies here. Just this guy in Act 2, though I never figured out how to get rid of it because I didn't want to risk it and I was scared so I just ended up avoiding it altogether. I don't have too much to say about Casino Night because I didn't enjoy my stay here on my first playthrough. I couldn't tell if it was wanting me to have fun or to move on. Ping pong all over the place, ah, okay. Well anyways, my paranoia definitely played a part in my lack of enjoyment of this place, but still. I do, however, like the music and the aesthetic here. Alright, Hilltop Zone, what do you have for me? Goodness gracious. I did struggle with this place on my first playthrough, but I still don't think it was that bad. What was making it worse was Tails. Tails! What are you doing? This isn't the first time I've had issues with Tails, nor is it the last time, but it's so glaring here because he messes up my seesaw jumps. Just calm down, Tails! Oh my gosh! <laughs> of course, the music is good and the visual aesthetic is pretty unique. I wonder if this zone was inspired by this place that they used in Sonic GT. Bars. Anyhow, I'm still paranoid and frustrated at this point, but uh, I can't give up here. Gotta give it a chance. Move forward. I'd be lying if I said that I had anything constructive to say. It's the same as the rest for me, and it's so flip-floppy, like goodness. The game is encouraging you to go fast most of the time, but suddenly, zero frames later, it's like, haha, slow down champ. Then, when you slow down, it pulls the reverse uno card and says, pick up the pace, loser. Like, here I get wrecked by this guy because I was being careful so as to not lose my lives, and this delayed butt comes out of nowhere. Though, I'm sure if I was going fast, he wouldn't get me. This game isn't subtly leaning you into upcoming changes of the level to give you a fighting chance. Like I said, it's so flip-floppy. It's as if you go to flip the pancake, but the in-between animations are non-existent, so the next frame is the pancake already flipped. It seems like the only way you can break free of these flip-floppy chains is to already know what's coming. Oof. Hey, it's Oil Ocean. I remember this place. Oh. It's funny how long I thought that Oil Ocean was one of the stages original to Sonic Mania. But only if it was Manius that I was playing because, uh, I mean, what is this? And this? This is just more of the same to me. I've never played a game that shoved a get good in my face as hard as this game does. And I've played some Dark Souls games. Ugh. Oh, Metropolis Zone, what else is there to say? Because I know you aren't going to be better than the rest. I know about the Scythers. But to make it worse, I found out about these crab dudes. And I might as well not even go into Sky Chase and Wing Fortress. There's nothing much to say about Sky Chase in the first place, bars. And Wing Fortress is plagued with the same sickness as the others. Ah. <sighs> All I hear from this game is replay me, replay me, replay me, like it's a cassette tape on freaking loop. But why the heck am I complaining? Because that's exactly what I'm gonna have to do anyway. If I want them chaos emeralds, oh boy, am I going to have to replay the game. Why? Well, just so I can do a pop shove it on those half pipes. Before 
actually having laid my eyes on Sonic 2's halfpipe. I thought it might not be too bad, seeing as Sonic Rush had an awesome halfpipe. I do love it so. However, this is a different game altogether. And I don't just mean literally in regards to it being a different game. It's a whole different ballpark. Where in Sonic Rush, you could probably dunk the basketball because the goal was 6 feet off the ground. Whereas in Sonic 2, you have no chance because the goal is 22 feet taller than yourself and you have crippled aim. Making the success of making a basket something that you could only dream of almost. I don't even play basketball like that, so I'm not really sure why that was the route that I took. But anyhow. The thing is... I really hate when things outside of my control are what determine or contribute to the outcome of what I'm trying to carry out, and this is one big example of that. The special stages in this game make me burn. I could be really feeling it and killing a half pipe only for Tails to suddenly act like we're sharing rings. That isn't the case outside of this, so why is this a thing when I'm trying to do a kickflip on the half pipes? <sighs> The main issue I have with this game is its inconsistency, and that trait isn't an exception to the special stages. Sometimes it wants to gradually teach you something, however, the other times are full of random crap that it throws at you. More random than what land throws at you during a net battle. And you know why? Because, like I mentioned, this game wants you to replay the crap out of it. It's banking on you losing all of your lives and replaying everything all over again. Going back to the half pipe, maybe I would like this game more if it weren't for these. These caused me the most frustration because Tails ruins almost every stage for me after the second special stage. I can pull off a reaction to something that was random BS just for the effort to be wasted because I had to consider him. And of course, these are just optional, but I like getting everything in older games like this. Also, I did it because I thought there would be a supersonic boss fight, but I didn't find that to be true. And yep, I sure did get all of the Chaos Emeralds, and I can get them comfortably now, but at what cost? I played the special stages on emulator and set save states in order to practice because I'll be darned if I was gonna learn them traditionally. Despite doing it this way, it was still infuriating. <laughs> This game, it's not good. Not to me anyway. Which makes me so conflicted because I love all of the music and aesthetics of the stages, but I had to try so hard not to eat this replay me please casserole that it prevented me from enjoying it. Even when I tried to get soaked into the game, I just get pulled right back out once BS grazed my chinny chin chin. Maybe my experience was made worse because I didn't want to lose and start all over, but that's only natural. Who wants to lose all of their lives because it's inevitable? Good news is, I almost achieved my goal of not getting a game over on my first playthrough of the game. It wasn't until the very end where I got stubborn and wanted to beat Mecha Sonic my way or the highway. I should have just tried beating him the boring way, but oh well. Hey, look at the bright side though. I can do it easily now. Because... I replayed the game. Ugh. Man, let me just wind down a bit. I might as well go ahead and capture footage of the manual, because lord knows I'll always find a way to incorporate that into a video. Huh? You can play as Sonic? By himself? No. Well, look at that. You know, this game isn't that bad after all. This definitely doesn't negate anything that I've said. All of the BS is still accounted for, but now that I've played it six or so times and that I now know that I don't have to play as Sonic and Tails, I can enjoy it more. I can finally appreciate and get lost in the world of Sonic 2 more than I'm used to, and I like it. Well, an exception would be when I go Super Sonic. I found myself at one point appreciating Oil Ocean and how the sun was beating down on the area when, whoops, I have 50 rings and I jumped because I just have to do that sometimes and now the music is gone. But it could be worse, I suppose. Also, it's too bad that I tried playing as Tails and I couldn't use invincible boxes for some reason, or I couldn't beat the game. I'm sure it must have just been some bug, but I was done at this point and didn't try again. Maybe later I'll see what Tails' ending is. 
But man, what an insane 180. I can enjoy the game now, but it was cost my sanity. Anyhow, despite everything I've just said, when I think about what this game could have been, I kind of feel a sadness because this game would have been so perfect for me when I was younger. In the current day, I'd still say that I have quite a bit of patience and tolerance for interactive gameplay jank, but that patience is definitely not what it used to be. On top of that, I have an understanding of what is or is not good in my eyes concerning the elements of a game. On the flip side of that, when all I had was time as a child, this game could have been the foundation of where my love of challenge came from. I would have kept on playing it thinking it was just because I wasn't good enough at it yet and I would have done it. Maybe I get more frustrated now because I have more to do with my life and I view time differently with my life revolving more around it. It might also have to do with how I'm playing this with the intent of turning it into a video. And with having a seemingly limited amount of time to do it, I'm bound to get more frustrated when an element of a game causes me to spend more time on it than I would have liked. Even then, <laughs> I hate that I still wanted to get good at this game and get all of the chaos thermals despite the BS. It seems that despite this game not being that foundation of challenge for me, I still have the will to overcome it. It could have just turned out a lot differently if this game was the one that kicked off that challenge in my life. And I'm all about challenge, believe me. But this is unfair challenge. There's a difference between replaying a game because it was fun and replaying a game for it to become fun. And at this point in my life, I can't knowingly accept that and excuse it. But at the same time, I can like it and do like it. Kid me, however, would have loved this game from the get-go. Maybe it would have turned into my favorite of the classics. Maybe. Cause Sonic 3 still has a 1-up in terms of sucking me into its vortex of a charming world. But it's a strong maybe nonetheless because it would have been very close at the very least. What a gosh darn roller coaster that was. My first playthrough of this game was probably the second worst experience with the game that I had, mostly because I didn't go for the Chaos Emeralds the first time around. The icing on the cake that wins out on top for being the worst was the second time I played when aiming for said Chaos Emeralds. The random BS that is thrown throughout the stages to emulate challenge, and how the emulated challenge is ported to the special stages as well. You can still see hints of where they use their skills of how to guide and teach the player littered throughout all of the game, but then it gets to a point where it all goes out the window, and they just say, now replay the game. It didn't help that this game's BS had a partner in crime in the form of jank. I mean, look at this. What's up with this hitbox? Maybe there are better ways to play the game nowadays, like in the form of a port or something. I don't know what's out there, but I suppose I'll look into it at some point. Of course, Sonic Origins is something that exists as well, so it's something I'll try out soon enough. On another note, Sonic 2 probably isn't as bad as what my specific experience portrays, however, I'm still not a fan of BS being the foundation for how challenge is implemented and using it as an avenue for replay value. Yeah, I like it now, but I'll always love the thought of replaying a game because I enjoyed it rather than the thought of replaying it to overcome BS. If it was fair challenge, I'd definitely be singing another tune, but yeah. Sonic 2 to me is a game with habits that I despise, however it's a game I still came to enjoy. Sonic 2 could have been the game that set the foundation for my love of challenge and would have more than likely boosted my tolerance for jank and video games that I already have, despite the game relying on unfair challenge. But most importantly, I feel Sonic 2 could have been the game that I loved the most out of the numbered classics, and it could have been that way for a lot of other people as well. Nevertheless, all of that is fine and good because I am glad to have enjoyed what I already had, and Mega Man was a fine enough avenue to instill the love of challenge into my core. So I'm happy with this timeline of events, and I'm glad that I finally played Sonic 2 for myself. Speaking of something that you should all play for yourself, Spark 3. That is all. <laughs> There's my daily Spark 3 recommendation. Anyhow, just like always, feel free to check out what else I have going on to see if you're interested, and if not, I shall see you next time. Speaking of next time, the Space Adventures of Metroid shall be up to pass next on the Chronological Tale, featuring Metroid and Super Metroid. See you then, and make sure to take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.